So the first speaker of uh, this session oh, okay. is uh, Professor Jay Sanjayan, who is the director of Swinburne Center for Sustainable Infrastructure and professor of concrete structures. Professor Jay Sanjayan's current funded research projects include 3D, printed, 3D printing of concrete, low carbon concretes, geopolymer concretes, use of phase change materials in construction and monitoring the performance of geopolymer concrete in the field. He has published extensively in these topics and is involved in many consulting projects related to concrete materials and structural design. He is a fellow of engineers uh, in Australia, an honorary member of Concrete Institute of Australia, and was the 2015 Honorary President of R-I-L-E-M. What is that, Jay? RILEM. That's the French acronym for uh, experts of um, construction materials. Very good. Well, you're eager to hear what you have to say. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you, Professor Koshnavis, uh, for the nice introduction. Um, uh, so my topic is... Um, about uh, 3D printing, obviously, um, but it's on um, using geopolymer and ordinary Portland cement concrete and also different technologies. So, um, so I'll just go um, quickly. Okay, so um, uh, we are Swinburne University is in Melbourne. So, um, uh, it is um, about eight hours from here by plane. And I'm going to talk about um, uh, three different um, methodologies. There's a powder-based system um, and, and an extrusion-based uh, system that most people uh, are familiar with, but also an additive and subtractive um, technologies which I think we should also consider. We also, I'm going also going to look at uh, two different materials, Portland cement and also geopolymer. So, uh, because we are starting out new um, in this field in the last two or three years working in this, we want to try everything, but eventually we will um, choose the, the winner of the technology and continue on that. So at the beginning, it's good to try uh, with a broader base. So I'll just explain what the three different technologies are. So um, this one is a powder-based system. If you are um, not familiar with it, this explains how it works. So you get a powder bed, and, and then you print using an ink, and the ink selectively hardens a certain uh, parts of the, um, the powder bed, and then the powder bed keep going down, and then you, get, you add layer by layer. So we use a cement as the powder, cement and sand mix, and the water is, um, is used as the binder to bind the cement. And obviously we use some accelerators so it can go um, hard very quickly. Um, and, and this is uh, how we end up uh, building. This is a cement, sand, uh, and water, and accelerators. And one of the good thing about this methodology is you can uh, make very intricate, detailed um, shape. Uh, this is um, our um, 3D printing. Uh, we have um, at the moment three um, different uh, printers. So we mix the concrete and then we use the 3D printer. Uh, the one it's uh, this is one of the three uh, printers that we have, and um, we can print. Uh, materials. This is um, additive and subtractive uh, technology, so you, you can add the material, but when you add it, you don't have to add it so precisely, because you can use a milling method to subtract and, and shape it. And uh, this technology was used uh, to build uh, some large uh, monuments. If you come to um, our conference in November, you can visit this um, uh, place and have a look at all the monuments that's built um, using this technology. 
Um, so I'm also going to talk about two different materials, um, Portland cement and also geopolymer. So for those who don't know what uh, these materials are, Portland cement um, is the cement that we normally use. It's produced using uh, burning calcium carbonate. And when you burn calcium carbonate to make calcium oxide, you have to release carbon dioxide. And, um, and at the moment, um, fourth largest carbon emissions coming from Portland cement. So uh, we look at geopolymer concrete. Geopolymer concrete is produced from waste materials like fly ash and slag um, and some activators. So we don't have uh, carbon emissions like this. This is a typical mixed design that shows um, how to make a 40 megapascal concrete with geopolymer concrete. It's an inorganic polymer. So with the powder-based system, um, the technology, you know, um, how intricate or how accurate your shape depends on the powder bed porosity, the particle shape, particle size distribution, and also the surface tension of the liquid, in this case is water, we add. We can change the surface tension of water also, which we actually do. Um, to um, adjust the surface tension so it can penetrate enough and, and spread, but not too much. If it spread too much, then you lose accuracy. So this is the uh, scientific part. This is a uh, voxel technology. They use sand and resin. And you can see the person standing there, that's two meters. So they have built something of very uh, intricate shape using sand and resin. So this is not cement, but uh, we use a similar technology, but um, if you have a big enough machine, we can build things like this. Uh, you have seen these pictures. This is using um, sorrel cement, um, and the other one is cement and polymer material. So um, the, the way that we used is using a SADCO printer, which is not a, a very large printer, and you, it, it's built to use um, gypsum. And the particle size distribution and particle flow is, are the important parameters. So what we did is we uh, took the gypsum powder, which is the SADCO proprietary powder, and we mimicked the powder distribution, same using geopolymer. Geopolymer is fly ash and sand and, and so on. So we mix and we match the same particle size distribution we mimic the same density, bulk density, and all that. So the powder bed is, is the same. So the machine thinks it's their proprietary mix, but we're actually using a different uh, powder. So the company is not really happy about that because they make money by selling the powder. But we have other reasons uh, to use it. So they, um, they don't... Um, offer maintenance for these machines anymore because they are not happy that we have uh, gone into inside the machine. But ultimately, we have to make our own machines that can do this kind of stuff. So, um, so we also study um, the, the surface tension and penetration of water by using this technique. We just drop a um, one milliliter um, or, or 20 microliter um, liquid, which is water with some surface tension modifier. And we use a high-speed camera to see how, how quickly it spreads and how deeply it goes. And these, using these parameters, we can calculate all the um, necessary um, characteristics of the bed and the liquid, and we can adjust accordingly until we get the accuracy. So to get the accuracy, we print these uh, shapes. So these are squares and triangles and, um, uh, and, and so on. So, um, oh, sorry. Um, so we print these shapes to see how accurately um, we can print the triangles and squares. And we print these cubes to uh, get the strength. And, and then we print. Um, uh, other um, shapes as well. And you, then after we print it, we post-process it. So we take the specimens and 
put it in an activated solution to cure it for a um, few days, seven days at 60 degrees. This is for geopolymer. And you can see we can get uh, strengths up to 30 megapascal, which is a reasonably good uh, strength for construction purposes. Uh, um, and, and you can see the effect of um, different slag and fly ash ratios and how that affects the strength. So these are the, um, when you start with the new fly ash, fly ash being a waste material, there's no standard formulation. So if you're going to start this formulation with a new fly ash source, you have to start doing these um, things to see how to tailor make your mix. So if you uh, read our paper, you can see how we uh, did the methodology of optimizing the mix to get the right mix uh, proportions. So it was uh, published in uh, Materials and Design. Um, this is post-processing um, uh, using cement. So we used uh, geopolymer, but we also used uh, Portland cement. Um, and then we cured the Portland cement in, in, in lime water. And we could get strength up to about 11 megapascal, but we are working on uh, increasing the strength beyond that for Portland cement. And at the moment, um, we have found one application where we can use. This is uh, one of our uh, Professor Xiao Dang uh, from our um, university. He's working on um, developing sound um, barriers. Uh, so we can um, we build these columns, 3D print these um, columns, and when the sound goes into this, and these are like echo chambers, and the sound get absorbed. And then if we um, have these columns at, uh, at the particular distance, that distance is based on the wavelength of the sound that you want to block. In this case, we want to block the um, sound from the traffic um, on the side of a motorway. So we can, put, we can line up these columns on the side of the motorway and it blocks the sound, but it doesn't block the view. So you can see, um, you can see it's, it's not huge walls, very ugly walls. These are some columns there, but they are very effective in absorbing. And, and we've done this with, um, we 3D printed these um, uh, items and we uh, trialed it and um, they work for uh, those frequencies that we tested and we won an award for this work from Minister and Concrete Institute in Australia. The other is the extrusion based printer. Uh, as Professor Koshner we said this morning, there's a lot of excitement right now. Uh, this is a children's program. Uh, they came and did a, a thing I'd like to show you. Uh, is there a sound here? No sound. <laughs> okay. So they came to our lab and uh, did a segment on 3D printing and how it can be useful in um, building um, or building houses and, and so on. In, that's our lab. That's my PhD student and we're standing behind there. Uh, and we, they, they're showing how the um, uh, different type of 3D printers and how the uh, civil engineers are now um, taking it to, uh, or using it to build um, uh, uh, houses and, and things like that. So that's our, um, we have a robot we program to um, do 3D printing as well and um, um, and we pump. So at the moment it's mortar, but it's limited because of the size of the nozzle. So if you go to a bigger nozzle, uh, then we can put aggregates and, and make 3D printing using concrete. Um, but um, so the, at the moment, this is Ming, he's mixing the concrete. This was uh, shown on national television in Australia, so we get a lot of people now calling to see what this technology is all about. Um, so, um, um, I think we can, uh, if, if a program is shown for children, so that means it's, it's reaching out to a, a lot of audience. Um, 
Okay, so um, what we um, did for um, is using um, our printer. We we made layer by layer, and in this uh, project we um, tested the um, the strength of interlayer bonding and um, and we what we used was gluing the specimen at top and bottom and pull it apart. And what we found was uh, consistently, when the delay time between the layers uh, is increased from 10 minutes to 20 minutes to 30 minutes, the strength consistently um, drops at 30 minutes and then goes up. So um, we wanted to know why. And, uh, and what we found was the, uh, the moisture on the surface of the layer plays a very important role. So most people work in concrete. We know bleeding of the concrete is an important part. So when the bleeding happens, the moisture um, in the concrete comes up. So, um, and also we have drying. In addition to that, when you extrude concrete, the, the, the process of extrusion pushes a lot of water to the surface. Uh, that is well known. Uh, now, when you have, so as soon as you printed the concrete layer, you're going to have a lot of um, uh, moisture on the surface, which is good for interlayer bonding because what the moisture does is that give, it makes the concrete more uh, workable, more flexible, um, and that creates the bonding. When it's dry, the concrete becomes more stiff, and then you get a lot of porosity. We found the interlayer had a lot more porosity when the delay time was around um, 20 minutes. But then later, the bleed water comes back, and you get the moisture balanced, and then the strength goes up again. So, um, but that's going to change if you're doing it in another environment, because it depends on the evaporation hu humidity in the environment as well as the, um, the, the bleed rate of the material, which depends on the particle size distribution. However, we just identified this surface moisture as an important parameter uh, when you're designing this. And we also did some geopolymer trials. So um, I just keep going. Uh, time? Five minutes, OK. Um, so what are the criteria for printable geopolymer? It's extrudability, buildability. That's the ability for the layers to stay while it's still um, building many layers. And also the workability so we can push the uh, concrete uh, through. And also the open time. So these are the technology commonly used by the papers published in this uh, field. But ultimately, they are all related to yield stress and viscosity and so on and so forth. So that's using, we tried six different activators for a geopolymer printing. They all have different uh, 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 properties. And extrudability test is how easy it is to push the uh, concrete. Workability, uh, we use uh, uh, a spread test or we um, we apply a number of impacts to make, see how far the concrete can spread, and that gives us the uh, diameter, gives us the workability. Uh, shape retention, we just look at the, uh, the width before and after. Uh, this shows the, uh, how the different activators uh, have different uh, shape retention ability. We also use a um, viscosity modifying agent to help with, uh, with uh, shape retention. Uh, that's the CMC powder. This is the open time uh, test. So different activators give different open time. Um, that's the compression test. Uh, also uh, different activators uh, showing different times. So what we found was the potassium-based activators they're not that workable. They don't have very uh, good open time, and they also very short, low on uh, on strength. Sodium hydroxide with degrade. There's two grades of sodium silicate that's commonly available. 
uh, the D grade is is good in some aspects, but the best one is the N grade. Um, it gives all the uh, good properties, but it has a short open times. So that means you've got to mix the activator towards the end of the uh, mixing cycle. Now, in terms of workability and rheology, uh, in this uh, 3D printing, we are dealing with zero slum concrete. So we might have three different types of concrete. They're all zero slum concrete. Uh, to differentiate them, you can't use slum concrete because they're all going to be the same result. So we um, use extrusion rheometer, which is a rheometer uh, uh, that specially we, we uh, designed and built. We put the concrete and we push it through. Very similar action to the way that we're extruding the concrete. And we measure the uh, force versus displacement curve. And based on that, it's a closed form solution to get the viscosity and, um, uh, and uh, shear stress or uh, yeah, yield stress. The other test we used, which uh, we found was a lot more easier to use, is the one that um, civil engineers have been using it for a long time for clay. Uh, it's a direct shear test, so we put the uh, specimen um, in here, that's the concrete, fresh concrete, and then we maintain um, a constant force at the top. That means the this uh, gap is not constant because you can only maintain constant force or constant gap. You can't do both. Uh, and then we shear this along here. And you can see in the pictures how the concrete gets sheared. Uh, it is very commonly used for clay, but we used it for concrete. And, and there are two models that follows the um, rheology of um, very stiff uh, concrete. That is um, the Bingham model, uh, that is the, that equation there, uh, plus the uh, Mohr Coulomb. Mohr Coulomb is how most clays. And what we found was within those, um, uh, we are only extruding at very low shear rate, so the, vis, the mu is, um, uh, the, the gamma dot is small, that component is, the, is not that sensitive. So, so we could uh, lump them all together and find a more Coulomb failure. And uh, what we found was um, for this concrete, uh, depending on the water cement ratio, as you increase the water cement ratio, the cohesion increase, uh, but the friction angle decrease. So once we know this, then we can do all the analysis we want. So the important finding that we made was that it's not that sensitive to the extrusion rate within that range that we uh, measure. So that makes it easier for us to do the, uh, the research. Uh, these are things that we uh, are printing now, but we want to one day build, print these things. <laughs> uh, I hope it is sooner. Um, and um, and this is our um, 3D printing uh, group at Swinburne, but I don't have time now to show. These are some of the challenges. But I just wanted to also uh, make a small advertisement for our um, uh, 3D printing uh, conference, international conference. Uh, so far, we got about 70 abstracts submitted. It's November um, 26. So if you've done any work, please. Um, uh, uh, submit your abstracts and, and come and present. Uh, I think it will be a good event to uh, bring all the people um, together um, again, like this forum. But we have also a lot of companies uh, coming to display different 3D printers uh, because the, there's a lot of interest in the Australian construction industry. Um, so, um, that's, if you want to find out more, please go to the website on 3dcpconference.com and I hope uh, to, uh, uh, to see at least some of you there. Um, I think um, I'll, I'll stop there. Thank you very much. Thank you.